My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train. We're gonna be going random random covered in 19, as you might imagine. Whew. Ooh, that's Stygian God and a melting remnant. We've also got the tempering strength of our units. So we might want to build a second floor in the final fight. Those are some very powerful starting cards for like nuking for Oh, Incant Seal. Okay, we're going for an Incant build. Damage spells cast on this floor cost negative one. Yes. Yes. And then do we have a... Oh, we do have a Stygian unit next to a Merchant of Steel! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Oh, we're just going to look for the Encant unit there, and then we're going to buff it. It's going to be good. It's going to be a lovely, lovely time for us. Uh, I will take that. The more units that I can get, the better chance we have at getting good ones. I love that Ice Storm just kills all of those for us. Um, I'm gonna go Train Steward Double Drag here for this kill. Just to get those three cards out of the deck so that I'm more likely to draw into damage. There we go. Nice. You should be able to do this just with spells at this point. Okay. That'll do it. No damage taken. And we get our first unit draw. Please be incant stuff. Uh, offering token is really good with incant builds. So I'll just take it for that reason. Burning Cleanse, Draft, and Molded. I could use Molded to bring back Entombed Exp... <sighs> do I do a Molded and Incant build? Molded for my second floor? I think that's a little much at the moment. Okay. We should go for the tank first, right? Right. We just don't want to have uh, this not offer a tank and then have a really bad time. In can't gain one armor is lovely there as well. Nameless Siren and can't gain rage one. Okay, so our floor is literally just Tethys, the God of the Unnamed and the Nameless Siren. You're going to gain two rage every time I cast a spell. You're going to gain six armor every time I cast a spell. Um, how about we actually give you extra armor? Eight armor every time I cast a spell. Do I want to reroll here? What would I even put on the on the Nameless Siren? Because if I reroll, I'm not going to be able to get the best stone here. So it'd only be... Eh, I don't think we need to do that right now. I don't think we need it. <sighs> Enemies enter with armor 10. Can we deal with that? Yep. I think it's pretty likely we can deal with that. We should probably set up on higher floor. Ooh. Well, if I set up on the bottom floor, I can actually... I can actually cast everything this turn. Great. Okay. Uh, let's go... I still am on the bottom line, and then I'm going to throw a double drag here, I guess. The Entombed Explosive isn't actually going to explode, is it? Currently, we're only taking three damage. Two to the spikes there, and then one to the conduit. Get some more armor and rage for the bottom line there. And then, I guess I'll make two Entombed Explosives up there, just in case the boss happens to get up there. Really wish I could access the conduit in the back line there. Okay. 
Ouch, but it's fine. They'll die when they get to the top line. So I took one damage overall for this fight. One damage overall is... Pretty great. <laughs> pretty much the best they could have done. You know, bar that one point, right? <laughs> Uh, Titan's Tooth. Titan's Tooth would be a good card to cast with a Offering Token. It's just the Offering Token isn't necessarily going to be in the same hand, is it? Uh, let's take an Energy Siphon, just because that's always castable. None of those. I don't think I need a second floor at all. I also already have most of those units in the deck. Okay. Spell upgrades here, like... Lowering the cost of spells doesn't really matter that much to me because the Tethys is already doing it. I could upgrade the Ice Storm in particular to give it plus 10 magic power would be lovely. But there's also like so many more upgrades that would be good for the Nameless Siren as well as the Guard of the Unnamed. So I'm going to go over here. Okay, so I could give the plus health to the, to the Guard of the Unnamed and in fact I will. It just makes them a lot healthier when they come into the battlefield at the very start. I'll reroll here for multi-strike. I find it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, plus five, plus ten. Is that good enough for a siren? I think it might be. I think it legitimately might be. And then I... If I had space, I would love to put that harvest, <laughs> the big sludge on the same floor. Uh, I'll take this money though. Oh, I paid money. Oh, sorry. I thought this was the a different event. When you summon the second unit during a turn, gain three energy. That'll help us in the setup. And the dregs are zero cost minions. So it's also good after that. It's just, I'm going to need more expensive spells if I'm going to be able to justify it. Uh, so Daedalus. How are we killing Daedalus? We are scaling the nameless as high as we possibly can, as quickly as we possibly can. So we're going to set up on the bottom floor, I think, here. Yeah. Yeah, this one should be now pretty simple. We've got the Nameless Siren just gaining not much rage right now, to be entirely honest with you. Actually, a very small amount of rage, just because I still have all of these train stewards and dregs in the deck. As we start to cut those, our first cycle is going to get a lot better. Oh my god, the Entombed Explosives as well. We have so few spells in this deck. Yeah, well, most of the spells are at the bottom of the deck as well. I'm going to specifically make sure that I play out the train steward just so that I have yeah, no spells left in the deck. One, two, three, four. We have so many encant triggers going off that I actually have to right hold, uh, right click hold through my encant triggers. Okay. Uh... Oof. Do we run a second floor with a bounty stalker? We should have something that helps us kill big units early. I'm taking a bounty stalker for that. None of these, though. And then draw is really important. Draw is extremely important. Especially because we do have the conduit... Titan Bane, so we don't really have to worry too much. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any spells upgraded that I'd really like to be playing here. So, duping over here isn't that great. Instead, I'm going to go for the artifacts. Dang. Apply days three to enemy units and to move between floors outside of the ascension phase. We're not, like, we haven't found a drip fall yet. And uh, what? Are we going to take a drip fall just for the days three effect? Refracting lens, whenever a card with consumers played, restore five pyre health. We don't have any cards with consume in this deck, and we're not desperate to take any. I'm going to take the money there. Really, really disappointing options there, though. Uh, let's take apply Frostbite 10 to the attacked unit. 
right? Yeah. That means if the God of the Unnamed just gets a huge amount of defense and the rage on the Nameless Siren is not enough to give it the ability to kill the boss, we have ramping damage with the Chill Wind as well. So what are we weak to at the moment? Sweep killing on Tethys, but that actually isn't that bad for us. Uh, Clipped Conduit. Huh. I might not actually be able to give them 15 armor. Because this, this Clipped Guardian is going to be able to get past us a lot with that. And the Clipped Conduit in the backline, like, our only target for it. This is another weakness of the deck. We don't have uh, backline target. We only have Ice Storm for that at the moment. So you're going to teleport to the top. So let's go Bounty Stalker there and then Train Steward. The Bounty Stalker will definitely die before the end of this fight. Okay. So the midline, just get those units out as well. It takes us so many turns to actually get all of our front lines down here. We need to cut so many of these train sewers and drakes from the deck. Like, they are slowing down our first cycle to points that uh, will soon prove to be lethal. And then an offering token just gets us past that. Fine. You know, the suckiest thing about this is that Bounty Stalker doesn't look like it's actually going to die. Alright. Offering past the dead weight. And then just get the extra spells out there. Alright. Should be able now to... Yeah, just throw these up on the top line. We need some directed damage. Definitely. Let's see if we find any. Yeah, with an Ice Storm and two Helical Crystalluses in that deck, like, what are you going to do about it? Uh, intent on Death or Subsuming Blade. Subsuming Blade is directed damage, but it is also a little bit expensive. But the Intent on Death is also the Bounty Stalker being able to grow. I like that so much. Uh, We're going to go for the spell upgrades here, right? Looking for Holdover for Intent on Death. Seam removal, no. Plus 10 magic bit, no. Let's cost reduce, harness the titans, because it's not damaging. Ugh. Giving Surge Stone both times there was really unfortunate. Decrease the cost of a Helical Chrysalis. Let's start removing some train stewards. That is one thing that's been really bad so far. Double removal was on the side with the dupe, and I had nothing I wanted to dupe at that point. Uh, and then before that, no double removal. So I need to start taking double removals more likely. So uh, Merchant of Trinkets was on the same side as double removal. I don't have that much money. I sh probably should have removed one less card just there. And cost cards get plus three to their expat. Melting Spout is actively bad. We want our uh, tombs to die if we ever play them. They're not our tanks. And if they were, 30 health isn't enough to make them good. Uh, first hell packs. I might go for the money here again. Specifically because I do have that artifact uh, in the next area. The artifact shop in the next area, rather. Uh, non boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. Hmm. That could be pretty bad for us, because unless we get the ability to kill the uh, the Silent Marksman in front of the Overcharged Tank, the Overcharged Tank is going to get a huge amount of armor. But if it gets a huge amount of armor, I'm mostly just knocking that off, right? Uh... 
Only because of the removals that I just made do I feel comfortable doing this, but even then, I feel a little, little dodgy. Okay. So the bounty stalker goes top floor. We have to have the ability to strike them back, so we're going to have to go second floor. Let's go drag, drag. Sorry, uh, Entombed Explosive, Entombed Explosive, drag. I don't want to throw Dregs away on the same line as the overcharged tank because it does have harvest. I need to scale up in this midline really quickly to try and be able to attack those backliners. That's not what we wanted. You can see that the overcharged tank is getting pretty comfy with that. Okay. Oh, we're going to take a piece. Uh, a bit of a hit to that overcharge tank there. Are we? Hang on. Literally, you are one short from death with the Helical Crystallis right now on the top, right? 50, yeah. If I put a dreg up here, that doesn't work because the dreg is going to be dazed. Let's first kill all of those. And then I will just make sure you die. Fine. Uh, that dreg's going on the top line, though. One, two... And then, easy. Yeah, I figured we were going to be able to do this, but... It really did come down to being faster than the enemy. The damage I deal to you is not as important as the stacks I get on my own units here. Because uh, we're going to lose Tethys to the sweep. So we're going to need a lot of damage to come out of the... Uh, out of the Nameless Siren pretty quickly. Interesting. Well, now maybe I cast at least the Helical Chrysalises down here. Okay. I really wish I could attack those backliners right now. We have Ice Storm and Harness the Titans possibly in the next hand. That'd be nice. Okay. Hey, I got to take out one of the backliners at least. I think we still live. Ooh, and now the pie gets plus 15. Sure. That's actually pretty decent for netting anyone who gets past us. Uh, Ancient Synergy versus Urchin Spines versus the Frenzied Swarm. I like Ancient Synergy for just being able to knock down a frontliner. Okay. I'll take that for continuing to scale the Bounty Stalker as well. Start a battle summon four units from your deck to the middle floor. No, because then the Tethys isn't there. And then I can't even guarantee that the frontliner is the guard of the unnamed. Precious plating. I'm going to reroll. Yeah. I could have possibly afforded some on the reroll because they have ranges from like 210 to 260 or something like that. This is actually pretty bad. But also I didn't want any of those. So I'm not sad about it. Before we remove anything, let's go to the concealed caverns just in case. Just in case it's alters how we want to play here. Hmm. The extra health in the pyre probably would have been a reason to take aggressive here. Petty Theft is just another spell, and it is directed. Sometimes I need directed spells that bad. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, a 
And then the removal here should be again train steward, train steward. Great. So we have five dregs in the deck as well. Uh, fail the wings of light, Alabaster Guardian. Uh, okay. Well, you're not going to give me scourges, right? No, you're not. Okay, so I can set up on floor two. Trying to make sure that I'll have reasonable reach here. Great. Constantly just throwing intent on death on that top line is great. Also, if any of the artifacts had have been, you know, Waxer Snuffer for doubling the effects of that, oh, that would have been good. Gotta love those easy kills right there. Nice. You have to love it when the enemy has encant triggers and you're still like, yeah, but whatever. <laughs> like, like I care. Okay. Nameless Siren is doing really well here. Petty theft for the kill on you. Because I can, dang it. Especially because it doesn't even stop me from getting all of the kills on the middle floor. Okay. Offering first. Ugh. Actually, keener on playing this. Double scale for you. <laughs> I just love how well that works. I don't need to give him holdover. Just having two in the deck and cycling through enough is fine. Uh, we're definitely going draw after this. Oh, a hundred percent. Give one more spell weakness to you, just in case that makes the difference. Somehow I feel like it's not really gonna be part of the difference, maybe that's okay. That's 119 that the that the nameless siren was doing earlier. Oh. Uh we could go a harness the titan here as well. Fine. I'm about to go draw. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to have to decrease the cost of it, though. Oh, Merchant of Magic right next to removals. I'll take it. Does Holdover go on the Ice Storm because we have two copies of Harness the Titan? Yeah, it does. It does, actually. Uh, do I want to give it plus 10 by... I'd probably give it plus 10 by base as well. All right. Let's go double removal. Is double removal double drag or double into... No, the entombed explosives are actually pretty good in the start of the fight just for helping us set up and remove start waves. <sighs> Damage spells cast on this floor cost negative two. We have extra draw right now. Did we make we did make the other harness the Titan cost zero, but we have an ice storm every mm. I honestly think I could go either way here pretty safely. I might draft uh, draft a higher cost spell in response to having taken that there though. Enemy center with armor 20, but we get 400 coins. Okay, so. 
They learn to damage the effectiveness of the pyre shard. You ferry to the end. I think if we set up on the top floor, we can do this. But we need some time to actually let our incants grow. Oh my god, look at this opening hand. Oh, I could just call the intent on death on the top line there, actually. It would have been fine. This is one problem. The bounty stalker has no one to protect them. I mean, I'm casting spells on the wrong floor. It's working. Okay, these really wimpy ones, those go to the top floor, definitely. Okay. Well, we're about to get Ember Drained for a ridiculous amount unless we do something about this floor. Never mind. We're just gonna get Ember Drain for that amount. That's okay. Deserved it. And it actually makes me use my spells here on the top floor. Something had to force me to do it. I can intend on death someone that doesn't even have an extinguish trigger. I'm gonna pre ice storm that bottom line there because I still don't want to be swept if I can avoid it. Nice. We avoided it. We killed the back line in time. Oh, I should have thrown the Petty Theft because I don't actually have the ability to cast that. Okay. Alright, we've already got the kill. Great. Let's, um... I storm you for most of your health. Yeah, Incant is, uh... Very powerful. Extremely powerful. None of these are needed. At all. <laughs> no. I'm fine with the two I have. In fact, that might already be excess to requirement. Uh, we have a dupe as well as the unstable vortex over here. We're going for it. Give quick to the bounty stalker so the bounty stalker can just defend their own floor by themselves. I like that. It's also reroll. I can just give it the plus health. Make it large. It's on the floor by itself. Why not? There's the waxer snuffer, but is that too late? Is that too late? Eh, I missed out on tempered talisman, but it's okay. I don't think it's too late. Let's cut the two dregs. Or cut two of the dregs. And then we can manually remove the final one. Just speeding up this first cycle again. Okay. Because I can't put two bounty stalkers on the same floor, I'm not going to dupe it. But maybe what I should have... Oh, No. I really like the idea of duping the ice storm here. That's just going to ruin floors by itself. We should be able to set up on the bottom floor here as well, as long as we get the Guard of the Unnamed early enough. Or maybe even Tombs to protect us for a second. Wait a second here. I don't think we can set up on the bottom floor. 
we did get the God of the Unnamed in the opening hand. Very, very, very pleased with that. But Shade Wings and Light Wings both are being spawned in at the same time. And I know later floors have like double Shade Wing floors, which is 30 damage by itself, right? Just the single Shade Wings. That's 60. We're going to need a buffer floor. Not just so that we can get more stats on the God of the Unnamed, because it currently drops with 40 in the enemy damages. 45, 56. 56. One, two, three, four. We have four spells we can cast this turn, which is four armor per... With eight armor per, actually. Four by eight. 32? 32, right? So we come in with 72, and the enemy immediately takes away 56. And that's just the first round. I can't do that. We're going to have to set up on the second floor. Which does mean that I kind of just let these enemies go for a moment. That one has to be cast there. It's 50 damage. I'm going to get the armor on the second one, though. Okay. Then the siren. Gosh, I really wish that I had a... An Ice Storm or a Harness the Titan in hand so that I could use the Petty Thefts here. That'll kill the Frontliner at least. So then I can use Frozen Lance to kill the next one. And then we've removed most of the damage from that floor. Let's go double extinguish on you and throw out a Entombed Explosive, I think. And then just another spell on this floor because we can. Gotta go for those and can't triggers. Really? Both of our holdover ice storms are... Mm -hmm, it's fine. It's fine. Both of them being in the bottom of the deck is a uh, dire concern. Look at the health of my unit. Losing 85 this turn because I can't kill the backliners. And I can't kill the backliners because I don't have my ice storm. Now we can finally start doing it. They should have done this cycle first there. That's my bad. Uh, Because we only have quick and single strike on you, I'm going to use a frozen lance up here. Yeah, Just so that we have the ability to kill it without losing it of our units. Because I'm going to try and use the entombed explosives possibly to tank for the bounty stalker at the very end, if need be. I don't see them getting past this floor, but we did just take 85 damage on this floor last turn. Although now we do have the, the Ice Storms and they've got holdovers, so we should have them in hand approximately every turn. Approximately one all of the time, please. All right. God. Just leaving that Light Wings alive constantly. So wait, I, I had only these three units on the field and then I cast two Ice Storms. So it was 10 hits and it rolled a, one, uh, a two and three every single time, right? Two and three and then two thirds of that chance and then two thirds of that chance and then two thirds of that chance. So two thirds to the power of 10, right? Yikes. Nice shots. And that one at the very least, okay, that one at the very least did get both of them very quickly for us. And we're starting to get to respectable levels of armor. There can't be that long left in this, right? Petty Theft is now actually enough to kill one of those backliners. Great. Yeah, there can't be that long left in the fight. I really wish there was a turn timer that would just show you how many turns are left in the fight until you get to the boss rush. I think it'd be super useful. Well, as it turns out, it was only one turn left. We've solved the puzzle. Okay. Neat. We still haven't got the kill on the Seraph yet, so we do have to continue working for a moment here. And that will do it. You know, the remarkable thing here is I thought it was going to be 
comfortable, easy even, to get the Seraph down with that floor. I thought that by the time the Seraph came to that floor, we were already going to be fine. 100 armor plus on the front liner, more than 100 damage multi-strike on the second liner, and then we have Frostbite on the back liner, 10 per hit, and it still, still wasn't ridiculously far off. Oof. <sighs> it's nice to finally be through Covenant 19, though. We butt our heads against Covenant 19 for a little while there. Let's see what the 20th is going to bring us. Negative one capacity on a random floor. Oh. Oh, yikes. Um... That's going to mess up so many things I do. I am very reliant on having the right amount of capacity on the right... Oh, okay. Well, hey, Nameless Iron finally got a, uh, a golden border there as well. It has deserved one for a while, at the very least, uh, from a stream series episode. Almost... Almost, almost, as you might imagine, the, the the Melting Remnant are the one with the least of their cards gilded. I wonder why. I also wonder why, actually, this one's legitimate. The Stygian Guard doesn't have more of them done. I guess because there are probably certain cards in Stygian Guard that I just always ignore. For the moment, though, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all of my content on the game past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.